We know that there's a spiritual battle. We look, we look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, where we started off there. We're going to start reading again in verse number 12. See, Satan, and people, people have this concept of Satan, right, in your mind. When you think of the devil or Satan, the majority of people think of a guy, a red guy with horns and a pitchfork, right? Or they'll think of, you know, Satanist. They'll think of Anton LaVey, maybe. They'll think of, like, you know, that is Satan. And, and you know what? It is, right, to an extent. Not, not the guy with the, the horns and the pitchfork. That, that's, that's not Satan. <laughs> that's just completely unscriptural view. That's just what the world comes up with. But Anton LaVey, is he a Satanist? Yeah. But that's not the, 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 the way that Satan is going to really come forward with his attacks. It's one way, but that's not going to be the most effective for him, right? Not many people will buy into and subscribe his do as thou wilt philosophy of just everything goes and, uh, and, and just go full-fledged into his satanic Bible and doctrines. Satan's a lot more subtle than that. And we get a glimpse of this here in 2 Corinthians 11. We're going to look at, start reading in verse number 12. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So the Bible tells us here that Satan himself is transformed into this angel of light. Now, what could be more appealing than looking upon an angel of light? Right? That's going to give you uh, uh, probably confidence if you were to say, wow, look at that, there's an angel of light. That I believe so many people do experience and witness and see these, these, these phenomena and these events that, that many people claim to have in their life. I don't think it's all just made up. I think people do see lights. I think do, people do see apparitions of different things that, that very possibly and probably are Satan or his minions. And it says here, he's, he's, he's transformed into an angel of light. This is the way he presents himself. This is the way he looks. He's not going to come to you with the pitchfork and horns. He's not going to come to you with the obvious stamp on his forehead just saying, I'm the devil, you know, and, and I'm wicked and evil, and, and, but listen to me anyways. He's a deceiver. He's going to come to you and try to gain your confidence in whatever way he can. So it's no surprise that of, of all places that you would think you're going to have the most trust level and the most confidence is going to be in a church setting. It's going to be in a setting where you're trying to hear from God directly because God is the source of all of our truth and wisdom and our knowledge. This God is who we're looking to worship. God is the one that we can trust. So it only makes sense for the ultimate deceiver to try to get himself as close as possible into that position and, and, and try to influence people and steer people away by being as, you know, looking as close and looking as good as he possibly can. No, no con man, no deceiver is going to be successful at their deceit or successful at their con game unless they could build trust, unless they could gain confidence. It's just, it's all over if people just walk right up and be like, yeah, I'm not giving you any of my money. You know, people think about, you know, we think about just regular cons on the street. The most successful people are the ones that they come in with their business suit and they, you know, the, the white collar crimes, right? The, the ones that'll, that'll be swindling investors and stuff out of a bunch of money, out of millions of dollars. Why? Because they build up this facade. They build up a, a, a fake history. They build usually a fake name. They build a fake, you know, a fake enterprise. They build all of this stuff as a big show. And they present this evidence and, 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 you know, supposed evidence, not real, it's all phony, it's all fake, it's all a big lie, it's just a big scam, but it's all designed to make themselves look really good and credible in order to gain confidence. And Satan is no different. And one, you know, the, the biggest trick that Satan has is his subtlety and um, being able to influence people on a mass scale, especially these days. And, and we're living in a time right now that is relatively unique in the sense that communication uh, technology has developed so quickly. So there's always been people who have controlled information, 
right? We know in the Dark Ages, we know throughout history when, when media has been harder to, to come by, whether it be paper, whether it be ink, whether, you know, whatever the resources are in being able to, to relay information to people. Anytime you have someone in control of that information, you've got a problem when there's this one, one or two people or something in, in control of that and, and you're going to be receiving what they want you to know.